I created a tutorial that showcases how to use Node.js and Express to develop a client-server application for JavaScript and specifically to develop a web map. Now, the tutorial and the source code are available on GitHub. So you have here different source code directories. And in this video, I want to show you how you can download this code and the tutorial and to run the examples in something like Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is a rather comfortable integrated developer environment. So IDE for a range of programming languages, but it also works very nicely for JavaScript and specifically for developing um, code in Node and to develop full stack client server applications. So let's see how this can be done. So first things first, let's uh, download the code of this application and of this tutorial. So you have to go to my GitHub page. So github.com uh, forward slash forza forward slash tutorial dash express dash leaflet. Uh, if you go to this page, you can do two things. You can either fork this application, meaning you can copy it to your own GitHub repository. This is if you're logged in, or you can just download it locally to your computer. Downloading locally, click on code here, and you get either, um, so you get this HTTPS link to the tutorial itself. So you can use Git. So if you have a Git client locally installed, you can download it. You can also open it in GitHub desktop. So this is a separate application, or in the simplest case, you can just download a zip file. Zip file is, it just downloads all the data and you can just expand it in your direct, in the local directory where you would like to, to keep it. So download zip file is an easy way of doing it. Using the git command is another way of doing it. So I'm gonna show you this case. So depending on what computer you use, I use, for example, here in Mac, I open the terminal window and I went to the directory where I keep my where I keep where I would like to keep this code. So here in module five VS code. And to download the code, you just have to um, enter git clone git clone and then the URL, the HTTPS URL you copied from here. And you press return and the git client just downloads the file. So if you if you look into into this directory, so let's do it in a more comfortable way using Finder, you would see so it downloaded this directory and all the files are in here. So the code is in here. Those are the three different examples. And also the readme file is in here, which is the tutorial itself. So it's the text of the tutorial with links to the source code. So now you have the tutorial locally. The question is, how can you open it? How can you edit it? And how can you run the examples in a comfortable way? The easiest way of doing it is downloading Visual Studio Code. So depending on your operating system, you can download the software. It's free. So when you open it for the first time after installation, this is what it looks like. Now, what you would typically do is you can go open and you can open a file. So you can go to your directories and you can just open the file you just downloaded, or you can do something else. You can go to your terminal. And since we are already in this particular file, in this particular folder with the files that we downloaded, you can just type in code dot. So dot referring to the current directory and you press return. So what this command does, it just opens, it opens a VS Code editor for this entire directory. So it's an alternative to, to opening the program first and then selecting a file. So here's the tutorial. This is what you just downloaded. So if you click on the readme file, you will see that um, this is the entire, this is the, the source code, so the markdown code for the readme file that I created. So it is much more comfortable to actually parse it on GitHub itself. So you see 
it's easier to read it there. I don't, I'm not going to talk a lot about this here, but what I'm going to talk about is about the code examples themselves. So the code examples, we have three code examples that we would like to run. And if you go through the tutorial to run them, uh, you have to type in commands. So typically you will type in commands in your terminal window. So you can here uh, go to the respective directories, but that's a bit cumbersome because uh, you want to have an environment where you edit and uh, so where you edit your code. So for example, you would like to check to change your webmap.js file if you want to make alterations, and then you want to run the code uh, in the same in the same environment. So the question is in Visual Studio Code, how can you do that? Well, Visual Studio Code, you can open a new terminal in the code itself, in the environment itself, and then so you get a window down here. And this is very similar to, to the terminal window I have in in from OS X, but it is all in one environment, so we don't have to switch windows. So how can we now run the or start the web application? So the first thing is we have to change or we have to in the terminal we have to change the path so that we are actually in the directory leaflet express of the specific application. So I did that here. So we have to be that's the the overall folder of the tutorial and then within you have code and then you have leave express so you have to be in this folder you can check so those are unix commands you can check with pwp pwd to see if you're in this particular path if not you can use a cd command and for example say that uh change directory code and you can use the tab com the tab button to autocomplete the path leaflet express and then you're in this respective directory so the first thing we have to do before we can uh, try to start the application is we have to download the respective javascript library so those so-called dependencies that we need now the dependencies are recorded in package json so in this file and those are and they're all javascript files so we need to have um important for us express the express dependency and we also need to have the leaflet the leaflet library uh, as a dependency so how do we do that well it says it here in the tutorial to download the those dependencies those libraries and to create these node modules folder in our application you have to use the package manager npm and you just type in npm install so npm install checks your package to json file checks the dependencies and just downloads them so if you run this command you see it says i added 54 packages and it created this node modules folder and you see that all the libraries are downloaded here now so this is all this information and this is not kept in the github repository because it's centrally available in the in the npm repository so you can download it when you need it now the next thing you we need to do is use the npm uh, run build command so this command from if you go to the tutorial creates uh, or uses a bundler to copy libraries from node modules to our public folder, right? So it creates this big sized, uh, here it is. It creates this big sized webmap.js file. It's already, in this case, it's already here, but uh, we have to do that first. So it creates this large scale, this uh, one big JavaScript file that contains all the libraries that you will need afterwards client side to run the program. Now to do so, we, in package.json, there is this command defined build, which just uses browserify, so the bundler, to create a webmap.js file and uh, outputs it into the public JavaScript's webmap.js folder, right? So browserify is the so-called bundler and does the job for us. Now, in addition, we also copy style sheets for leaflet into the public style sheets folder so that the client side program will be able to see them as well. So the command to do this is npm run build. So that does all the things for us. And then we are almost ready. So we can say npm uh, start. 
And what this command does, it starts the application server, so the web server, and we can then access the program through the browser. So opening up a browser and typing in localhost 3000 loads this particular program. Now you see that, uh, yeah, the, the place marker here, the zoom level are a bit off, so we, we don't like that. If you want to change that, you just go back to your webmap.js file in Leaflet Express, and you can change, for example, the zoom level. Let's change it to 11. Um, now, before you can, before you can, before this is visible to to the client, we again have to run npm run build. So it again recompiles all the JavaScript files together in one big file, and then you say npm start. And if you refresh it, yeah, it zooms out. It's still the center of the application is, or the center of the of the map is still off. So you would have to change that as well. Uh, but in a nutshell, this is how this is how it works. So doing the same thing for another program. So for the more complicated one that uh, application three, as it's referred to in the tutorial, you do the same thing. So you control C, by the way, stops, uh, stops the web server. In this case, you have to change directories or you have to go up one level. Now you're in the code directory and you have to go in here into leaflet express pack data. So change And you do the same thing, so npm install. Again, you have to download all the modules, all the libraries that are needed. Then npm run build, runs the build command. Here, the, this build command is a bit more complicated because there are more style sheets to be considered, like for mock clusters, you name it. And then npm start. And as the tutorial says, so you can go back to the tutorial all the way at the bottom, so the application, this application has has three different um, pages. So the first one is localhost, which is just the simple one, different background map, but essentially what you saw before. Here we are. Oh, let's, let's open it in another tab. So we have then we have restaurants. So this is showing all the markers of our restaurants JSON data set. And we have restaurants cluster where we use marker clusters for aggregating the markers based on zoom level. So those are those are the three applications. And to just show you that really uh, this, what you see here in the terminal window is connected, what you see in the browser, those are all the requests. So those are all the, the get requests that the server the application server receives and what it provides to to the front end to the browser to the client side so if i stop the server here and i go back and for example i would like to reload the page it tells me it's not cannot be reached because the application simply doesn't work so i hope this tutorial was helpful it was really just to give you a an overview of how to download this tutorial that's available at the URL here and also that's mentioned in Blackboard and how to run the examples. Again, if you want to know more about the code, just follow the tutorial uh, in combination with this video to better understand how developing a leaflet web mapping application in combination with Express and Node.js as well as uh, uh, templating uh, frameworks such as Puck aka jade can be implemented